Hi everyone. For this demo of Cloud Guard Network Security for Azure Virtual WAN, we'll be covering the use case of Remote Access VPN. Some assumptions and some additional info as we go into the demo. Um, you will probably need some prior knowledge. It would be helpful to have prior knowledge of the, the integration we currently have between Cloud Guard Network Security and Azure Virtual WAN, as well as prior knowledge of the Checkpoint Remote Access VPN solution, as we will be going into that as part of this as well. To help you out with the integration steps and other, other information in relation to this integration and into this particular use case, I will be providing links to the prior demos and other relevant info in the description. So let's get started. All right, so here's my environment. It is going to assume that it's already set up and you'll see that here in a second. I have two virtual WANs configured in two different regions to simulate you know, I, you know, removing the single point of failure per region and to show you the, the endless possibility and endless scalability of the, the solution where we can have users coming in from any region and getting connectivity very, very simply and very easily without any hand holding. So in my environment, I have two virtual WANs set up, one in East US 2 and one in West Central. If I dive into each individually, you will see I already have my NVAs configured. So I'll jump into my East US 2 hub, take a look at my NVA configuration. Here they are. Same for West Central. As you may have remembered from the previous uh, sessions, and once we have these configured and added into the hub, you need to add those to your Checkpoint Security Manager. And here are those four gateways. The one piece, or the, the one of one of many, or one of a few pieces that we need to modify or change in order to support this new capability is on each of these gateways. We also need to go into them and enable the VPN blade, the IP, IPsec VPN blade, which then brings a couple of extra options into the properties screen. We'll need to make a change under IPsec VPN and then link selection and change the IP selection by remote peer to statically netted IP. And this is going to be the IP address. That's the, you know, the public IP address that, that has been assigned to us by Azure. So in this case, this is my US East to the, the, the NVA zero. So we'll take a look at that one real quick. There's the IP address and we'll need to do that for all four of our gateways in this case. So each, each gateway that you have configured for this solution, we'll need to have that done. In addition, you will want to have configured an office mode network defined and configured. So we're gonna change it to allow office mode to all users change it to manual and change it to the network definition that you have defined. So these are some assumptions we're making that you already have this done. Um, please work with your, your local offices to, to assist you if you're not familiar with these setups. Um, just for the sake of time, we're not gonna be able to dive into all the nitty gritty of remote access VPN. It would deserve uh, you know, many, many hours of its own, it could, or it could, because there's so many possibilities and capabilities that it has to uh, accommodate any architecture and scenario. So real quick, I will show you, here's my four networks, one network defined per NVA. And what that, you know, just to give you an idea of what we're talking about here, what this does is when a client VPN user connects in, they'll be allocated an IP address from this subnet. And so if I take a look at that particular subnet, which is right here, it's going to get an IP address from this network def definition. Once that is set, you also need to make a change to each gateway um, to a configuration file. This is also mentioned in the, there's, it's listed as, a, as a, an item, and I'll show you this right here for the demo purposes as well. This is the SK that you need to follow, SK103440. Let you, I'll give you a second to write that down. 
And what this change is doing is requesting that the remote access VPN client that connects in to do a DNS lookup each time it connects in, which gives us that redundancy or gives us that, um, you know, removes that single point of failure possibility. So you're maybe making a change using by, and we give you pretty good instructions on how to do that here in you know, making sure we're copying and, and making a copy of the original. You're going to be modifying this track client underscore one dot TTM file. And you're making three changes. And the way this SK is formatted, you're going to be making a change and, look, and looking for this attribute, enable gateway resolving, and changing it from client decide to true. Then map mode, you're changing it from client decide to DNS based. And then also automatic map topology from true to false. And you're going to save those changes. Jump back to your manager and install policy. You also need some sort of rule to um, allow that VPN traffic to get around the environment. In this case, it's for lab purposes. We have a, a simple rule saying any of my clients going to internal networks that are coming in via remote access, that's accepted. And this is just the RFC 1918 address spaces. Just give you, give you an idea, but that you, know, you can do whatever you need to in that regard. All right. So once that is all set, now we need to jump back to the Azure portal and configure our traffic manager profile. So traffic manager is where we do all of the DNS magic. If you're not familiar with traffic manager and it's extremely simple to set up, I have a configuration already in place, but I will walk you through the initial steps to kind of give you an idea of what that looks like. So you don't have to, you don't going to miss anything as part of that. So you just go to traffic manager and do create, give it a unique name. It will tell you if it's not unique. Oh, test one, I'm going to leave it at running method performance. I want the, the, the quickest responding one to respond to me. Resource group, just pick one and create. I have seen it take a little bit for it to show up here, so I'll pause here and let that show up and then we'll continue. All right, so my profile is now there. Click on checkpoint test one. I'm going to go to the configuration settings. Leave that running with the performance. I'm gonna change the protocol to TCP and the port to 443. And save and then go to endpoints and we're going to add all four of our gateways so any participating IPsec VPN gateway that you want to be part of the remote access you know resolution you need to add those here so we're going to change it to external endpoint give it a name and in my case and I'll show you here in a second I just named it the same name as my NVAs and the IP address is going to be the IP address that we talked about before, the public IP. Change it to its location. So in my case, I have East US 2, East US 2, and West Central. And hit Add. You're going to add all four. So I'm not going to go through that because I already have it was configured. So I'll jump back to my existing profile. And here you can see I'm already in the endpoint section. Here are my four gateways. If I click on each, you'll see the public IP address for each one as defined. And as you can see, they are showing as online and enabled. You can do a quick test of your, of the, of the setup in general, by doing an NS lookup, jump back to the profile configuration, actually the overview real quick. It gives us a DNS name and it's simply the profile name dot traffic manager dot net. 
So I'll go ahead and copy that, jump back to my NS lookup. And if everything is good, it should reply with an IP address or one of the IP addresses of our NVAs and it's working. So now that I know it's up and working and happy, I can now configure my checkpoint VPN client to use that DNS name. So I'm, I've obviously, once again, I've gone ahead and made that happen already, but I'll kind of walk you through what that would look like. Go to new site. Next, you would punch in your DNS name, hit OK, log in, and you're pretty much good to go. And that's that's it. Obviously, there's a, a lot more possibilities as far as logging, you know, capabilities and um, multi-factor, etc. But Bottom line, that is the the easy the, the the gist of it. There's nothing more complicated than that. So what we'll do is go ahead and connect that client. I should have left, left it up. I'm going to do a connect to change my profile. I've got a dummy user account. I'm going to go ahead and connect. And it's going to go ahead and connect me to one of the gateways. Action succeeded. And you can see here it connected me to, I believe, one of the ones in West Central. Let's double check that. Nope, I lied. It's the US East 2, the first one. So it's connected to this guy. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and simulate a US East 2 outage. So I'm going to disable each of the US 2 gateways in Traffic Manager. and reconnect and see what happens. And they're both marked as disabled. So I'm going to jump back to my VPN client, disconnect, and simply just connect again. And we're back connected and you'll see now I'm connected to 4.255, 250, 125, which is one of these guys. This guy. So as you can see, we were able to very easily create a highly redundant multi-region remote access VPN solution with not a lot of, well, not a lot of effort. There's some pieces that I, you know, skipped through but um, to be honest, the, the entire lab took me about an hour or maybe maybe two hours tops just because I haven't done it in a while um, to configure. And your local SE teams, engineering partners, et cetera, will be able to help you through this no problem whatsoever, and, and not to mention the, the cloud overlays. So hope this was helpful. Take care. Thank you.